This is Luke Gnowski outside Occupy Wall Street, right outside the new World Trade Center complex. And I'm out here with Walter, who's a 9-11 first responder. Walter, what's your story? Well, the reason why I came out here is not just because I'm a first responder, but I'm a construction worker and an American citizen. And I feel like my country has betrayed me because of legalities or red tape. Now, unfortunately, my financial situation has declined to such a point that I've reached a point of desperation. And I've been out here taking up a collection for myself, not just for myself, but I've been giving to the people behind me because it's the responsible thing to do. But I've reached the point of desperation that financially and mentally I can't handle it anymore. So I have come to try to do like what I've always done, and that's to fight to stay up on my feet. But it seems like the people who I've reached out for for help have turned their back on me. And it's happened two times now. Uh, I went for workers' compensation for the first World Trade Center fund. The first time I filed, apparently it was too late. And the second time, they basically told me that the only way I can override the statute of limitations is if my mental capacity was in question. Yeah, you showed me a letter before uh, yeah. that the city actually wrote you, and uh, the city denied you for a very, very silly reason. You got the letter right there. Yes, I do. And basically, you know, at the workers' compensation hearing held on 10-28-2011, involving the claim of Walter Hillegas at the Queen's hearing location, Judge Peter uh, Georgia Gallos made the following decision, findings and directions, decision, no further action until the claimant produces any evidence of mental incompetence. So you, as a not alone first responder who came down here to rescue, save people, and help recover the city, is being denied basic health benefits because you are, you are, how, how do you explain this? Because you don't have <laughs> a, a, a nurse with you 24-7? Well, basically, I would have to have somebody clean my rear end after I use the restroom. And that's to put it politely for the sake of this interview. Yeah. But it, it seems disgraceful that they would find every single little tactic and every little trick that they can to basically tell us, well, you guys are expendable labor. You didn't, you did it on your own. Nobody asked you to. You are a volunteer, so you're free labor, and you are like, yes, you're like a newspaper. You read it and you're thrown away. And that's how I feel, unfortunately, how my country's treated me. I mean, and that's what the city has been doing for, for from the beginning, yes. uh, denying basic health benefits, denying basic coverage of people who came down here, volunteered like yourself. I mean, I can't tell you how many individuals I met personally myself who were just thrown to the dirt. And if this could happen to you, this could happen to anybody. You came to our need. You came to rescue people you didn't even know for the sake of this city. You know, and now the, the establishment, the, the government system is just disrespecting you, which is awful. It's a real shame because with this particular protest, this is my home. It's my backyard. I grew up here. I was raised here. I had my first kiss here. Rode my bike here for the first time. Everything, all my first were here in New York City. But the New York City I know died in 2001. And this new New York City that's emerged basically has dismissed me at every which way, shape, and turn I can possibly think of. And it's not fair. And there are many other first responders like me who are not police officers and firefighters because they've got all the pageantry and all the awards. And for somebody like myself who has no real political backing, no nobody to help me out, we've basically been brushed off to the side. Yep. And it, it's a real shame that this is what it's come to, unfortunately. Police officers, military men, and firefighters, even though they are guaranteed some benefits, even had problems getting those. And I talked to other people who are not in those official branches of, of service, and they even have a harder time uh, getting the basic benefits. I mean, we have 50,000 people who came down here. We have hundreds of thousands of people who live down here. And there will be more people who pass away because of the dust, because of the lies, because they said the air was safe to breathe when it wasn't. Yeah, Christy, Todd Whitman, yeah. and, and all, all of that stuff. I remember all of that. But as a New Yorker, as somebody who worked in this city, grew up in this city, and all of the four reasons I mentioned to you, it's my home. It's my country, you know? I hope to get married here one day and have kids here. I mean, this is my, my home. And somebody basically went into my home and destroyed it, and I did what most other New Yorkers or American citizens in general would have done. And I heard the call of my country, like many of us did, and came down here without any thought for ourselves, without any, you know, consequences behind that. You just did what you had to do for your fellow man. And now the time has come where... You know, I've got sick, and now I'm turning to the very city I went to go save 
and my city and my state and my country is ignoring my calls. And, you know, it makes me wonder, like, you know, was it all worth it? And it's a real shame that this is what it's come to, unfortunately. By somebody like me with all these medications here in front of me, taking up a collection, so that this way at least I have money in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And you're here at Occupy Wall Street? Yes, sir. It's, it's a movement of many people from all different backgrounds, all different diversities, but it's good to see... I call you a hero. I know people shy away from being called yeah, heroes. I, shy away. I, I, I know most of the first responders do, yeah. but it, but it's an honor and pleasure for to see someone of your stature being here, fighting for the right reasons, fighting for something that should have been done and, and taken care of years ago and has not been taken care of years ago. Thank you so much for being outspoken. I do have one message though I want to share with everybody, and I have to look directly into the camera for this one. Because of the simple fact that, you know, you see everything that's going on behind me. So all those people that doubt what this movement stands for, if it wasn't for this movement and for all of these kids that take a risk by sleeping out in the cold in the elements and having the cops harass and harangue them and the mayor trying to find all these different ways to get them out of here, if it wasn't for them welcome, welcoming me in here, and allowing me to do what I do here, I wouldn't have been able to have paid my rent last month. And I need people to understand that not all of them are here to have fun and games and jump around and have a good time and bang on drug, uh, and drums because a lot of us have some serious issues and I think the public needs to understand when they look from the, look from the outside in, they see all the tents and they see all this weird stuff going on. But on the inside of it, these people are no different than the people on the other side of the barricade. They're fighting for me. You know, they're defending somebody like me. And they've said that many times. And I'm honored to call them my brothers and sisters and cousins and nephews and uncles and all of that stuff. You know, it gets me a little choked up. But, you know, I, I need them as much as they need me. I would just wish our politicians and our leaders seen it that way. And unfortunately, they don't. Don't believe what the mainstream media says. Uh, come out here yourself. Meet these people. Meet Walter. He's out here uh, right by Cedar and uh, definitely help him out. This is all the medication he takes. Help him out, make sure he gets the medication that he needs. Get out here. Walter, again, I thank you for being here. Thank you. You're the reason I'm proud to be an American. Thank you. God bless you, brother, and I hope people come out here and meet you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, too.